Help support the companies that support our community. This is a piece of U. It's about 10 inches long and three inches in diameter. I got it from a friend of mine in Ireland, Brendan, quite a few years ago, and I thought it'd be great for this project. I put it in between centers and turned a tenon down on one end. That way I can grab it in the chuck. Most of this project is done using the, the chuck. That way you can drill into it. It's a pepper grinder. And you just put the chuck on, put the tenon in there, and then I brought the tailstock up to line everything back up before pulling it away and starting to drill. I started out with an inch and a half Forstner bit. So all the pepper mill kits are probably just a little bit different. This one, use an inch and a half bit for the hardware to go inside and you drill down a half an inch for that. I'll have a link down below in the description to the kit I used. So you drill the largest one first, go down in whatever the distance is the, the plants say, and then I switch to the smaller bit. Now the smaller bit is the one that's gonna run all the way through this and it's where the actual pepper goes. So I switch that over to a inch and sixteenth and that bit, depending on the size of the pepper mill, um, you might need to put an extension on it. I ended up, mine's about seven, seven, eight inches tall after I got it finished. So I just went in about, about four, four inches or so on this end. And I drilled in, I guess it's about, this first part of it is the bottom of the pepper mill. So I drilled in about three quarters of the way into it. You don't want to drill all the way through depending on the size of the pepper mill because you have to flip it around and put the larger bit back on to do the, the other end of this. So make sure you don't drill all the way through. After I got that drilled out, went ahead and brought the tail stack back up to support it because this is pretty far away from the headstock and just started shaping it. Started out with the parting tool to just put the, the foot on it and clean that up. Ignore this measurement here. I was gonna make them both the same size. In the end, I ended up making making this one taller than the one I had done done the other day. So I got got it all measured out, and Robin thought it would look better if one of them was a lot taller. So we I scrapped that. You'll see that line disappear here in a second. But yeah, depending on the size, the measurements are kind of important for the length of the rod that goes in them. I went ahead and used a beading tool on this. I put quite a few beads on it, just in, and then in between the beads, I just gave it some shape. Uh, just You can kind of, pepper mills are really, they make great gifts, they sell well at craft shows, and they can be as simple as you want or as, as detailed. So you can have fun with them, just make sure you don't go down too far and hit that hole that's running through the center of it.
when you get close to where you're going to have the break from the top to the bottom, there's, going to, going to be, there's always going to be a bottom and a top part. You want a little bit of a transition piece. So what I did on that, again, I, I put a bead on the top of it. And that way, when you do the top part, you can put a bead on it and it looks, you know, it evens it out and looks looks good. So I just shape this before putting that, that bead on it and then I'll drop the bead right on that and then part it in half. I didn't go all the, all the way through and part it off. I need to sand it first. So I just brought it down, went through all the grits, sanded it while it was still on the lathe like this, and then went ahead and used a pole saw and cut this part off. Since I still have the top of it in the chuck and it's all lined up, I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom part of the top. I just cleaned up that little nub so that I had a nice point there in the center for the Forstner bit to line up with and then started working on that. And on the top part, you just drilled a smaller hole. So the, all the kits are a little bit different, but pretty, pretty much the same. So you drill the smaller hole into the top and there'll be a piece of hardware. I'll, I'll show you the assembly at the end. There's a piece of hardware that goes in there so that when you put it all together, it lines up, lines it up with the bottom. Same process here. Just went ahead and pulled the tailstock back up to support it to go ahead and, and shape it. And this line here actually is the correct line on the top part. Like I was saying earlier, there's a lot of different lengths of the, the rod that runs through the center. So you can kind of do whatever you want as far as the, the size goes. And I put the bead right there again. So those are the two halves that are going to go together. So there'll be a bead on each one of them and it lines up nice. After I got it parted off, I went ahead and switched jaws down to the pin jaws and I'll use those to hold the bottom part again so that I can drill that hole all the way through.
and it's just make sure you get it get it lined up and running true and same process with this you use the inch and a half first and then switch over to the inch and sixteenth and run that down inside of it until you until they meet up from the hole you already drilled. To finish off the top part, I turned the little dowel and just used that inch and a sixteenth hole to clean up the very top of it. Uh, and the whole process, I'm always bringing the tailstock up as much as I can to support it when I'm turning it. So just turn that little tendon down to a nice snug little fit, it holds on to it just fine. There's a little plate that comes with the kit, but the design I wanted, it, it wouldn't really work. It, it, you would have made the top a little bigger. So I went ahead and left that out. And I just took a drill bit and drilled down into the larger hole inside of it so that the rod would stick up through this small hole. But if you did want a larger top on it, there's a little plate and it would make that process a little bit easier. You could have drilled this, the inch and 16th hole drill bit all the way through to the top and it would and you would have been done but i wanted wanted just the knob on the top of them after they were all sanded and done i went ahead and put some walnut oil on it and just used a paper towel to wipe that on The kits are pretty simple. They come with all the parts. There's uh, This kit had, uh, I think, five screws in it. You just pre-drill, just a little pilot, pilot hole. And in the top part, there's a little piece that goes in there. You put in three screws, and then on the bottom of it, two screws to hold it all together. But it's a pretty simple, simple uh, process. Like I said earlier, they make great gifts, they sell well at craft shows, and they don't, they don't take too long to make. There we go, I got it all done. It is eight inches tall, and again, it is out of yew wood. It's just a beautiful wood. Thank you, Brendan, thank you so much, it's amazing. So I did two of them. Did a shorter one here, salt and pepper, and it's out of yew too. It just has some beautiful grain in it, and then you can turn them to get the grain to all line, line back up. They're some super easy projects. Um, like I said, they make great gifts. They sell well at craft shows. They're awesome. So what I did was, um, the, the first one I used the kit here. I'll have a link down below in the description for both of these, but I used that. Now Robin wanted me to make this one taller, so I have, had the other kit too for the larger ones, and it comes with all the pieces too, but it also comes with three uh, different size bars, the rod that goes through the center. So I grabbed the larger one of that to make this one. So I'll have to make a short little pepper grinder with the 
leftover parts. But yeah, super fun project. All right, I uh, oh, and all you do is, as far as like plans and stuff, you just go on Woodcraft's website and they have all the plans there. You just print them off and it tells you everything. If you wanted to make just that size for that box right there, it tells you the measurements on everything for the top and bottom. So it's pretty, pretty easy to do, but just fun project. All right, uh, oh, I, I want to give a shout out to Daniel. Uh, check out this video. <laughs> this video, he set up this cool little uh, drying station. It's a, like a rotisserie. He can put stoppers on it and dry them. I will put a link down below to his channel. Super nice guy. So go check out. He does a lot of great videos, but I thought that was so cool. A little rotisserie for drying resin. Super cool. All right, one other thing. If you've made it this far, I might as well give you a gift. My grandma came over for lunch the other day, so enjoy. Everybody have a good weekend and stay safe. All right, take care. Hi everybody, this is my grandmother Katie. She had a birthday about a month ago. She turned 95 years old. She lost her kitty cat, and I, so I made this urn for her. And she didn't get to have a big birthday party, so I told her she could come here and the whole world would be watching. I love you. I love you too. We used to dance to Dean Martin when I was a little kid, and we danced all the time to everybody some... Everybody loves... Everybody. Everybody loves somebody love sometimes. Dean Martin. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. All right.